Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about some basic graphs and their key features that you definitely need to know before you begin any kind of calculus course. So the first graph that we're going to look at is the graph of y equals x squared. So hopefully we all know that this is just a parabola whose vertex is at the origin, curves up, curves up. Key features that we need to know here. There are no asymptotes. The domain is negative infinity to infinity, meaning I can plug in any x value and get out a y value. My range, however, is restricted. My y values start at zero and go up to infinity. So my range is gonna be from zero to infinity, and again, including zero, which is why there's a bracket there. The second graph we're going to look at is y equals x cubed. This graph passes through origin, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and just does a little curve right on through. This graph really doesn't have many key features at all. Our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, meaning I can input any number, any real number in for x and get out a y value, and my range is also negative infinity to positive infinity. The third graph that we'll look at is y equals the square root of x. This graph starts at 0, 0 and curves up very slowly. This isn't leveling off. It will get to infinity. It'll just take a while to get there. My domain starts at 0. The reason being, I can't put a negative number in for a square root and get out a real number. I would only get imaginary numbers. So my domain here is from 0 to positive infinity. My range is also from 0 to positive infinity. I can't take the square root of a real number and get something negative. It's just not going to happen. So my domain and my range are both restricted from 0 to infinity. The fourth graph that we're going to look at is y equals the cube root of x. So this one is similar to x cubed, but it's kind of just flipped on its side. So this graph starts at 0, 0, still goes through 1 and negative 1, but it goes through in this fashion. So this is similar to the square root graph in that, yes, it'll get to positive infinity, and yes, it'll get to negative infinity. It's just going to grow very slowly, so it'll take a long time to get there. The difference between the cube root and the square root is that with the cube root, I can take the cube root of a negative number and get out a negative number. So my domain and my range are not restricted like they are in a square root graph. My domain for a cube root graph is negative infinity to positive infinity and negative infinity to positive infinity. The fifth graph that we'll look at is y equals e to the x. Now, this graph, if I plug in a 0 for x, e to the 0 is 1. So I know that this graph goes through the point 0, 1. It's asymptotic to the x-axis, and then it's an exponential graph, so it'll shoot up to infinity relatively quickly. The key features that I need to pull out from this graph for the domain, I can plug in any x value here and get out a y value. So my domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. However, my range is restricted. So if you look at this graph, I can see that the y values get very close to 0, but they'll never touch 0. The reason being, if I plug a negative number in for x here, e to the negative 1, e to the negative 2, e to the negative 3, those are the same thing as 1 over e, 1 over e squared, 1 over e cubed. So this just means that this number is getting closer and closer to zero. So even when I plug in negative numbers, I'm still getting positive y values. So my range here is going to be from zero to positive infinity, not including zero. There's no value that I can plug in for x and get out zero as a y value. The sixth graph that we're going to look at is y equals ln x. If I plug in 1 for x here, I know that ln of 1 is 0, so it goes through the point 1, 0. This graph is asymptotic to the y-axis, and then we'll eventually get to infinity. It's going to grow. It's just going to grow very slowly. So again, this is not an asymptote. It's just going to grow slowly. My domain here is also restricted. 
I cannot plug in a negative number for x and get out a y value. So my domain is going to be from 0 to infinity. I also can't plug in 0, so that's why I'm not including 0. My range I can see is from negative infinity to positive infinity. I will hit every y value in this graph. The seventh and final graph that we'll look at is y equals the absolute value of x. This graph starts at 0, 0, and we'll have a line with a slope of 1 for numbers greater than 0, and a line with a slope of negative 1 for x values less than 0. My domain is not restricted here. I can plug in any x value and get out a y value. However, my range is restricted. I'm only going to get positive numbers when I plug numbers in for x. So my range is going to be from 0, including 0, to positive infinity. The next thing that we're going to look at is shifting functions. There are a couple basic rules when shifting a function called f of x. So we'll let y equal f of x. And based on that, there's a couple of shifts that we can look at. So if I have the function f of x and I add c outside of the function, this tells me to shift f of x up c units. If I have f of x minus c on the outside, that tells me to shift f of x down c units. If I have f of x plus c, so the plus c is inside the function itself, then I need to shift f of x left c units. If I have f of x minus c, where the minus c is inside the function, I have to shift f of x right c units. And then the last two rules that we'll look at are reflections. Those two rules are f of negative x and negative f of x. So when I negate just the x of the function, that means that I need to reflect in the y-axis. And when I negate the entire function, I need to reflect in the x-axis. Let's look at a couple of examples of graphs that are shifted and how we can actually graph them. Number one, graph f of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 2. I know that since I have x squared here that this comes from the basic graph of just x squared, which is that parabola with a vertex at 0, 0. If I use the rules that we just talked about, since I'm subtracting 3 inside with the x, that means that I need to shift this graph right 3 units. And this plus 2 on the outside means that I need to shift the graph up 2 units. So when I sketch this graph, rather than putting the vertex at 0, 0, I need to move that vertex right 3 units and up 2 units. So my vertex is now at 3, 2. And then I just sketch in that same U shape that we just spoke about. And there is my graph of f of x. Number two, graph f of x equals negative the square root of x. Since this negative is in front of the entire function, I'm negating the whole y value, which means I need to reflect in the x-axis. The parent function here is the square root of x, which we just talked about. That graph starts at 0, 0 and just curves up to infinity super slowly. But since I need to reflect this graph over the x-axis, it's going to reflect over and end up in the fourth quadrant instead. So I'll still start at 0, 0, but now I'm going to be in that fourth quadrant going down to negative infinity. Number three f of x equals e to the negative x plus 1. There's two shifts going on here that I need to make sure that I graph. The first one is this x is getting negated. Since x is being negated, that tells me to reflect the parent function in the y-axis. This plus 1 on the outside of the function tells me to shift up one unit. My original graph here is going to be just e to the x, which I know goes through 0, 1, is asymptotic to the x-axis, and shoots up to infinity. Since I need to reflect this thing in the y-axis, it's just going to flip over and flip over. So when I reflect it in the y-axis, it's going to look something like this. But then I also need to shift this graph up one unit. When I graph this, the shift up one unit puts that y-intercept at 0, 2. Also, since I shift up one unit, my asymptote that was the x-axis shifts up one unit as well. So now my asymptote is the line y equals 1. Since I reflected in the y-axis, I'm going to approach infinity when x approaches negative infinity, and I'm going to approach 1 when x approaches positive infinity. 
there's the graph f of x. That's it for basic graphs and their key features. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.